Yep, and I see that recordings in progress. I think that's great. I've been trying to kind of listen and get familiar um, yeah. and, and jot a few notes down, but I think until I get get more familiar with things, it would be helpful. Yep. And, you know, moving forward in the future, I'll make sure everybody gets a, a tentative agenda item. Um, and what, what we'll do is we'll just kind of adopt some certain rules because every month what I want to, or as often as we meet, I want to give a report on certain key departments that, that their success breeds success with the church. Obviously, finances is something we'll talk about every meeting, expenses, uh, worship ministry, upcoming events, philosophy or any philosophy changes or adjustments, any particular scripture, themes, whatever, um, and facilities, right? Anything that affects us all in the business context is something that I feel like I need to give a report to the board. You can certainly ask questions. Um, and if we need deeper conversations offline, we can certainly do that. But in the future, what we'll do is I'll make sure that there's an agenda. But on every agenda, you will see a facilities report. You will see an expense report. You will see um, those particular department heads uh, and where we stand on certain things. That makes sense? Yep. And so we'll start the conversation with, with yeah. the, the broad category, and then we'll come into details. On that, let's go into the first conversation of the evening. Um, let me give the broad strokes. And then for detail, I'm going to turn it over to Lori, and then she'll turn it back over to me. Um, we have been doing a comprehensive line by line uh, deep dive into our expenses. Uh, to be blunt, some of these adjustments should have been made at the beginning of COVID and certainly some of them done in the middle of COVID. Um, but our break even point was roughly about $28,000 a month. And that's in all reoccurring bills. Um, and you add them all up. And this is what we have to pay every month to stay alive. When we moved into the parking lot, we did lose roughly 20, 25% of the congregation and their tithe along with them. At that point, we really should have made adjustments. I have made adjustments and I'm going to go over a few line items. But Lori and I have been ferocious in Excel spreadsheets, looking at expenses, cutting, trimming, uh, adjusting um, some of that. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of a few of them and then I'll turn it over to Lori for the, the more comprehensive report. We got rid of our copy machine. That was $400 a month. We killed the mobile app. That was $40 a month. We took the storage shed under Pam Harris's leadership, $350 a month. For the next three months, we're down to $109. Then it will go up to $209. I have a team of Mormons, five Mormon boys in their early 20s are coming on the last Saturday of the month to move us into the new storage shed. So I called on all my little Mormon buddies and they're sending all of their little missionaries I said, I'll feed you pizza and I'll let you try to convert me if you move my storage shed. And they all agree. <laughs> so I got, I got all these little Mormons. They'll be in their little white shirt and elder badges and their little ties. Uh, and so that'll be good. So we trimmed the uh, expense there. Um, we, we had 27 point email addresses. I eliminated about 14 of them, had to add one back in. I just got, had Salvador or uh, Sergi's removed um, there. We, I, I fired or I suspended graciously the cleaning crew. They were coming in every two weeks at $350 a month. We hired Pam's brother. And I'm pleased to say that the facility has never, ever looked as good. Every leaf blown, floor swept, toilet, you could probably drink soup out of our toilets. Um, but he's doing a fabulous job. He turned in an invoice. I am, just so you know, board, I'm not putting him on church as payroll because I have a certain dollar amount that I have to stay within. Otherwise you guys give me the stink eye. So I don't want his expense hitting that payroll. So I said, you send in an invoice every month for you know uh, Dave's, Pamela's brother's cleaning service. And we're paying him as a direct expense because that's how we were paying um, the cleaning service. So he turned in a bill for $180 instead of 350. Now we did have to fix the toilet, a couple of hundred bucks, the wax seal broke. That's being repaired. The water fountain needed to be looked at. And we did have to do a $500 annual maintenance of all of our fire extinguishers. Mm, that was painful. We had to pay that. So those were unexpected, but it's an annual expense. You know, we have to keep the congregation safe. So we have, and, and there was one other thing. I did adjust some ministry expenditures to make more of an investment in our worship ministries. We'll get back to that in a little bit. So I feel like we've made some good, smart cuts without being painful. Um, but every little bit, I think we brought our break even down almost to 23,000. If I look at the spreadsheet again, 
um, we've legitimately went from 28,000 down to 23. And it's not going to hurt. It's just being wise. Pastor Lori, Pastor Lori, I just gave you a promotion. <laughs> uh, Lori, do you have any color you want to add to that? And can you go over? I know you have a section on the finances, but add any color and context to that. I think I communicated that accurately. Oh, I think you did too. Yeah. Ah, I got one right today. So, uh, and do you, do you have the, do you send out the financials? Do you want to do a quick review of those? Sure. Okay. You should have gotten the financial report. Um, so on the bottom of the first page, the summary page, Pastor Lori thought a snapshot would be a good idea to help clarify some of the numbers. So I took a stab at that. Um, so for this is for December and the income versus expenses, we were actually ahead $6,000. Offerings have been up. The next board yeah. meeting, I'll show you the trend. Since we started preaching and talking about money more, we, I got some, sorry, Lori, we got, I got flack a little bit. People will be nervous. They'll think all you're doing is talking about money. I don't think we talk about money enough. And the offerings, if you look at the slope, I'll have you numbers by the next board meeting. Every month, the offerings have nicely increased. That is true. Yeah, I got two right today. <laughs> two, for okay. two. two for two. Two for two. So um, for the current month, we're ahead 6,000 um, income versus expenses, but for year to date, we're behind 6,000. Um, but we ended the year okay, um, thanks to a generous anonymous giver um, who donated $6,000 at the end of the year. So that really helped us um, stay afloat. Well, we, we were in trouble. I saw your income and expense report and what we were owing. And we, we were in trouble mm -hmm. and God put it on this person's heart. They approached me right in church. They said, Pastor Ed, what do we need to break even at the end of the year? And I said, we, I need six grand. We have to have six grand. I don't know. God's going to provide. And he says, all right, the check will be in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I almost kissed him on the lips. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So that, that was very unexpected and wonderful. Um, let's so uh, then Budget versus expenses. Um, for the year, for, for December, we were over budget by $231, but for the year, we were under budget by $60,000. So that, I don't know quite what to make of that, but yeah. you know, it's, it's just, it, it's a little bit misleading. And, yeah. and we were over budget for this reason. There was a big, there was a tax bill that's due in February of a, what a thousand dollars more than that how much is it um 914 yeah a thousand bucks and Lori, in her wisdom just went ahead and paid the bill because it was due anyway uh, or coming due so she went ahead and paid it and that knocked us over budget um i think pastor dave you know that i have a tremendous respect for our budget and our budgeting process however with covid i'll say this all bets are off we have a budget depending upon whether or not the increase is there but i don't feel led to spend the money just because it's in the budget to spend the money. I'm more focused right now and probably will be on cash flow because the cash flow report is more important to me than the budget. So I'll get back to more of it. We keep our eye on the budget, but right now I want to manage expenses and, and start building up a nest egg. There was a time midway through COVID, we did have about 10,000 or 12,000 and we went for a very long period of time and spent more than we brought in. It depleted the savings. By the time December hit, we had nothing in the account. There was zero, not a dollar of reserves. So I want to build up our reserves. But the way to do that is manage expenses, tighten up the ship, tighten the screws, and, and then trust God as people begin to respond and give. And, you know, we had two, what, two families visit three teenagers and two young adults and a partridge in a pear tree last Sunday. We keep doing what we're doing. The church will grow. The tithe will be there. But we we are looking at cash flow, even though the budget, well, we're 60,000 under budget. Yay. Doesn't mean anything. Is is Are we at break even? And do we are we able to build up our, our cash reserves? Does that make sense, everybody? Absolutely. Any thoughts? Anything you want to contribute to that? Yeah, well, no, basically that's what some of we were supposed to be doing in the past, we did do it was, you know, we had our projected budget 
which is yeah. what we didn't go over, but that was a wish list too. So yes, if we didn't have the cash to hit those particular budget marks, then uh, we wouldn't you know, do that particular ministry or parts of that ministry or what have you. Uh, if the money was there, then we, we, we would do it. So it's almost like a wish list budget caps off the most that we uh, use. So basically that's what you're doing too. So great. Yeah. Yeah. For, for just, for those of you that have an accounting background, Brenda, do you have an accounting background? Um, I've been in the CBO's office for the school district for 11, 12 years, the last, last part. So yeah, our budgets are quite bigger at the school district. Okay. Yeah. So, I, it, a bit, yeah. It's Salem. I'm over it. it ultimately the, the top line is four, $4 million for the year. And then there's, you know, the net operating income and then there's that's split by six markets. Um, and so, you know, I've got a good idea of fight. I don't let on, you know, but I have, you know, this stays on my desk at all times because I, I have, I'm, you know, I, I live in that space. Um, I do want to let you know that it is my intention as soon as we have a reserve to do an audit of our books. Um, Lori Javer has done a remarkable job and every, everything is totally above the board. Wonderful. Uh, my wife is also going to be jumping in and lending a hand. She actually joined the counting team last week. We're going to get a calculator that has a little ticket that prints it out. And just we're going to tighten up some protocols so that there's always a second set of eyes and a third set of eyes. Uh, but Lori brought to my attention that we haven't done what an audit in how many years, Lori? I, I don't even know when we had an audit. Yeah. So, well, you know, sometime that I'll say this, my thought would be sometime this year. I don't want to commit to it and then have to move the date. But it is on my radar to do a one level review. Now, Pastor Tim is a financial planner and he's a financial whiz kid. So he's agreed to step in and do a light review of everything but the payroll. Payroll is none of anybody's, you know, none of anybody's business. If you want to know, you can talk to me privately, but I'm not putting that out for any public consumption. Payroll is payroll. Um, but outside of that, income, expense, and, and, and how we're doing against the budget is something that he has an expertise in. And I don't know, I don't know if we need a motion, but uh, just giving that data to him and letting him do his an, an analysis on it would be a nice first pass at no cost. Um, but there are some loans we couldn't get because the first thing they'll ask is, when was your last audit? Right. Uh, we, could, we couldn't refinance our building right now if we wanted to because they would ask for the audit and we can't give them one. Right. Agreed? Any thoughts on that, anyone? No, yeah, that's, that's right on. Okay. All right. Now, speaking of payroll, uh, wait, Lori Javer, did I interrupt you? Do you have more? I'm so sure. Sorry. Oh, if I no, I think you covered everything. We're good. We're good? Yeah. Okay. Um, and we do have the giving statements coming out this weekend. We'll have them in church for two weeks, whatever's left over, except for people that are really no longer with us and only gave 25 or 50 bucks. We're going to mail out the rest. Um, I think that's, we're going to, is that what our plan was, Lori? Yes. Yes. Okay. And Mark and Lori wrote a really nice letter um, uh, thanking everyone for their faithfulness. Uh, it is nice to see the tithe increasing. It, it really, it's since October, we're, we're seeing, you know, increase in the giving. So that's good. Okay. Uh, regarding Pastor Mark and Lori, um, we do, in, in the next probably four weeks, I'll be talking to this, the, the pastoral staff first, then the general staff, then the elders in the board. We want to, we want to do Mark and Lori right on uh, their final day on 320 and uh, their boys, the Welch boys have all reached out. They want to send videos. We'll edit it up. We'll do a really big thing for them. You know, that's their day. Uh, this isn't my day. It's the new pastor. Uh, nah, that's later down the line. We're going to make the day all about what God has done through them. We're going to make it really big. Lori will probably do another beautiful, you know, trophy. Um, but we really want to do right by them. That's my heart for that day. Anyone disagree? Nope. Sounds good. Yep. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, it, it, uh, it was my intention to keep them at full salary uh, all the way through uh, the end of March. So they're, they are being paid their full salary. That's one of the other reasons why I'm being really tight on expenses now for me to honor my commitment to them um, because of their 12 years at the point. Um, to me, that was the right thing to do um, and the honorable thing to do. And they've earned it and they're worthy of it. So they're getting their full salary all the way through the end of March. At that point, there will be an adjustment and bringing it down, which will save us, you know, several thousand dollars a month. 
So right now it's tight. We all have to tighten up our belt. And, you know, we, we don't take people out for lunches anymore. We go out for coffees, you know, we'll do Zoom meetings. Uh, the budget will, will, it will have breathing room on or about April 1st. I didn't take a pay increase. I even gave one of my checks back. Um, and, you know, so did Lori Javer. We decided to cash into the vision on something. So you guys know we are taking care of Mark and Lori, and it is my intention to do a severance with them all the way through the end of the year. It will be at a reduced rate, a little less than half of what they're getting now, but I plan on keeping them on the payroll all the way through the end of the year as advisors. Uh, it's one month of severance for every year of service. And, oh, and that's another cost savings. Um, they were doing $800 a month in Lori's health insurance. And I said, I'm not gonna remove that because if we do and you fall down a flight of stairs, you're financially ruined. And so I won't allow that. So. Um, it was 800 a month, but she got a new policy and now it's $200 a month. And if she gets sick, she has to swipe the credit card for a $25 office visit. She can turn in the receipt. So that saved us about $600 a month. Um, anyone, I, I don't know, Dave, do we need a board resolution for that? But that is my intention um, as long as, as, as we can be a blessing to them. But they've earned a severance um, with 12 years of their life, blood, sweat, and tears um, they have earned it. They've earned a permanent place. I already told Mark and Lori, anytime you come back to the church, I don't care who's preaching. You can preach, teach, interrupt the service. We'll stop everything to recognize the parents of the house have come home. So yeah, we, we don't need a resolution. Just uh, if there's any discussion, uh, any comments or yeah. uh, whatever. Disagree, agree. Or, you know, this is the time to do that uh, because it's on their payroll. And that's already capped off at a certain amount. As long as uh, we don't go over that, you know, payroll cap, uh, you personally, because you're ahead of that, can do whatever you want with that salary and payrolls. Yeah, yeah. And I personally didn't take any pay increase, just so you guys know. Um, you know, I feel like my responsibilities have like quadrupled. But you know, I, I'm not. Do I'm working at Salem right now. Uh, you know, getting up at four in the morning, working a few hours, but. It's, it's all getting done and it's getting, everything is being done just so perfectly right now. So I'm not gonna upset the apple cart, but if we can be a blessing to our beloved, you know, pastors that have served us, um, I say all for it. And uh, we'll put their names on the two chairs up front and nobody will be allowed to sit in them. But um, I know churches that the pastors move on and all the pictures come off the wall, never mention the name. They come in and they're strangers in their own church. And I won't have that. I won't have that at the point. Who was it that gave, Dave, who was it? Some pastor left, they gave him $1,000 and and they never talked to him again? Yep. That's 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 evil. That's wrong in my ever to be humble opinion. Any thoughts? Everybody chime in, chime in with me real quick. Are we all in unity on this? Mm-hmm. Russ, you're quiet. What are your thoughts? Sounds good to me. Is yeah. there some way to work a gold watch into it? Uh, a golden parachute. We'll all go parachuting and do a, a big helium balloon. Um, you know, it, loyalty and ministry, friends, goes a long way. You know, you can measure faithfulness. Pick up the cup. Did the person pick up the cup? But loyalty, the fact that you have each other's back. The enemy hates us. And so the only way we can do great as a ministry is my shield protects Salvador. Salvador's protects Lori. Lori's protects Dave. Dave's protects Brenda. And, and the enemy hates us so we we have to have each other's backs and that means loyalty it means we fight behind closed doors but when the doors open we are united in vision and in conversation we are one voice to to the elders and to the community because we're united but if we ever have to disagree or have tough conversations this is the forum to have that or we have it offline privately does that make sense yep because we're not always going to see eye to eye on everything I look in the mirror and don't agree with that guy half the time. <laughs> okay. Any questions on finances? Are we, are we good there? You know what Lori and I are doing behind the scenes? Yeah. Um, Brenda, can I just mention, I did not, I didn't get the financial report. <gasps> oh. I know at the beginning it was mentioned that it was provided. Um, I just checked my email. You know what, Brenda? I think when I sent it out, I had an incorrect email address for you. So okay. I'll, I'll get one to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, you need to attach that to the minutes too. Right, right. And that's one thing we need to accept the uh, 
the budget that was shown to us today. Financials, I'm sorry, not the budget. Okay, do I get? Do I hear a motion to accept what was put uh, on the record today for the, the submission by Lori? Real quick, sorry, just a, just a clarifying one. This is the budget with the adjusted tithe for the next quarter. Lori? I, I'm sorry, adjusted tithes for the next quarter? Yeah, with the, um, I know there were some talks about adjusting the, the missions giving. Oh, and oh. Denomination giving. So yeah, I wasn't that, sure. That wouldn't be on that line item. That is actually under the expense column. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's not yeah, what we're Tithe is income. Missions giving is falls under the, it, it, it's an expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did we adjust? I guess he's asking, did we adjust that going forward? Uh, I gave the directive to adjust it, whether or not, but it's not, it's not adjusting the budget. We have a budgeted amount. I'm, I'm recommending we spend under the budget, which the last time you and I talked, I don't need a board approval or rec right. uh, on that. I would have to get that if I said, hey, let's give more, which the, right. the adjustments that I've made are temporary. We're still mm. supporting missions. And I did tell most of the board, I believe I talked to you and Pastor Bill, that I want to come back and review this towards the end of April, mm. because by then the dust will settle, transition will be done, and worship will be just humming along. So, exactly. Gotcha. So he's okay. not, Thank you for that clarification. He's just, he's just redirecting money that's coming into other areas. Yeah. But all the budgets staying the same. Stay the same. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's always a good thing to spend under the budget, especially if the cash quite isn't there yet. But really, guys, as as we have prayed and sought the Lord, uh, especially during the season, really people have been responding well. Um, and uh, there was a couple of. Excel spreadsheets that caused some minor heart attacks, right, Lori? Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, Santa Maria. <laughs> but it all got resolved, and uh, it's, it's God is faithful. He's faithful. Okay? Absolutely. All right, so that's kind of where we stand as far as... Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so can I just clarify what the motion is? Um, there, there's a financial report, correct? Mm -hmm. That right. and I, since I don't see it, I know you discussed it and all the various parts of that. So, is a motion to approve the uh, approve financial the report? Financial as report presented? that Lori submitted, and she's okay. going to give you a copy of that. Right, 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 right. So that's the motion. Yes. Okay, and who who made that motion? I made the motion. Who seconded it? Salvador seconded it. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? All right, it's unanimous. Motion passed. Excellent. Okay. I wanted to make fun of you a little bit on Sunday, the Pastor Day. You, you're kind of walking your dog down on 30, 30, 30 Street. You had that little <laughs> accident. Go in there and accept that Jesus Christ is your Savior there. We could rough you up behind the alley there. Yeah, the longer I talk, the accent comes out more. The thicker it gets, the longer you talk. It was, it was adorable. I'm like, oh, how cute. He's, he's, he's mafia. <laughs> Don't you forget uh, that. <laughs> yep. All right, very good. Uh, so just a few uh, odds and ends on facility things. Finances quickly, uh, I think we've, we've, we've adjusted. Um, I don't think I need a board resolution, but I'd like to go ahead and ask one anyways. Um, I am bringing in, uh, we've interviewed, and for the next three weeks, uh, we are making an investment in our platform ministry and in our worship ministries. Uh, we've held it together with silly string, peanut butter, and bubble gum. Uh, especially during COVID, the team has performed admirably, um, and Ken rocked it last week. If you were in the service, he rocked it. All the conversations I feel like I've ever had with him took, had fruit. It was creative. It was anointed. Just when you thought it was ending, bam, he hit it again with another track. And I thought it was probably the best service we've had in a long time. Any thoughts? Yeah, I loved it. Uh, just the three of them could have such a big impact in worship and was just uh, remarkable. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And God gave me a word for him right in the prayer meeting. God gave me a word and uh, it was for such a time as this. And I just feel like he received that in his spirit. You know, he's really coming alive. He's passionate. He's enthusiastic. He looks like he's 11, just tall. You know, he just, <laughs> I, I just, I find Ken delightful. He uh, is. He's a good guy. He really is, you know, and he, he keeps asking me, what do you see for me? What do you see for me? And I finally couldn't take it. So I called him and I said, look, you ever see Lion King, the little monkey, you know, dun, 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 squash banana. I said, he bonks the lion over the head and he says, you don't know who you are. 
I said, Ken, that's your challenge. You don't know who you are. You don't know the authority that you're walking in. You're not even aware of your own destiny. What do you want to do? I want to lead worship. I want to be great. I said, then start acting like it. You're the lion that's eating the bugs and singing Kakuna Matata when you're called to be king. <laughs> Act like a king, Ken, and stop being squashed banana. And so now he's calling me that little monkey, you know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but Ken's coming alive. I wouldn't say yes, that was yes. the prophetic word, but it's, it seemed to fit. Um, what also was amazing was uh, that one song, uh, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Yep. Uh, as you heard me say during the, the message, you know, my three grandchildren were there. And yes, uh, I used to uh, have that on a CD that I played with them on numerous times, so much that anytime I would pick them up to go somewhere, they'd say, Pop, Pop, you know, let's hear Open Your Eyes. And they would just sing along with me and all that. And then being there and that song at the same time, that was a God thing. You know, that is, that's too big of a coincidence, you know? <laughs> oh, I, I, it was it, so it annoying. Was beautiful, it was a be beautiful thing. Can I tell you guys a super quick story without boring you? I promise. Sure. Um, so he calls me. He says, I'm so sorry. He, I said, what? Because he asked me to come up on stage. So I'm like, just tell me what you want. So I walk up on stage and there's already the anointing. I can sense what God is doing. And I said, Ken, just stay in this space. Because I, I know, I, I, one of my giftings, I know when God is moving. So I said, Ken, just I, I stay in this space right now. There's something God wants to do here in this moment. He had his earbuds in and they didn't put my microphone in the earbuds. So he's hearing everything but me. And then he goes into the next song. And I'm on stage thinking, you idiot. I say, stay in this moment and you go to the next song. And then he watched the video and he's laughing hysterically. He says, I never heard you. So I just start going into the next song while I'm up there saying, stay in this moment. We laughed and laughed and laughed till we cried on the phone. It was so wonderful. <laughs> Ministry is so fun, you know? Yes, it is. Brenda, don't take that note. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, I do have a... a, a... A question, though, um, yes, kind of a point of order. Um, yeah. Since I don't have an agenda, um, I'm just thinking: Did we have minutes from the last meeting that needed to be presented and approved at all, Dave? Uh, we we did, but we don't. Uh, they were. Okay. It was a closed uh, meeting. It was a basically. closed meeting. Yeah. yeah. So okay. all the board members weren't. You know, privy to it, so it's a. Okay. There's, so just to say, answer your question, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But we okay. will move. Which is very forward. rare. That's the only time we ever done this, but it was because of the, uh, you know, the moving on of uh, Pastor Mark and all that. We all talked about that during that meeting. Okay. 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 A few more things, and we're almost we're almost wrapped up. Um, this, there's not a whole lot. I am bringing in Quinn. He's scheduled for the next three weeks. He's two hundred fifty dollars a service. Uh, that includes a Thursday night rehearsal. Uh, we did lose our sound guy on Thursday nights, so they're coming in at 7 a.m. Quinn is a professional. He's been a worship pastor at another church. He's already reached out to the team. He's got the next three weeks planned. Quinn is everything I want and we want to take us to the next level. Uh, Katie loves him. Patrick loves him. Ken thinks he's his big brother. Um, it is my intention to invest in the worship ministries both time and finances, whatever it takes. Um, we don't have a bass player. And I got a referral from Karina, who reached out to a really cool young 30-year-old named Anton. He called me from the airport. We had an interview today. He's coming on Sunday, and he's going to sit down with Quinn and I after service. He's been playing bass for two years. And so I think that it has a very high potential of working out. And um, we're just going to continue to make investments in the worship ministries. I would like to make a motion. Um, there is a budget line item for guest ministries. Um, you know, it, it was always kind of, oh, if somebody comes, we give them a hundred bucks, you know, and I think it was budgeted for that. Um, because I'm paying him $250, I'm not putting him in his payroll. It's guest ministries and honorariums. So I'd like to make a motion that I, I can uh, make sure to pay him and Pastor Luann, who's normally $1,000 a service. Uh, she's coming Friday night for 250 bucks plus a chicken dinner um, you know, I'm going to bring her dinner and, and, um, and then pay the childcare 50 bucks. So I make a motion that uh, I have permission to go over the budget for guest ministries for the month of January and February, um, only so that I can take care of Quinn for three weeks and Luann for one. Is there a motion? We'll second that. Okay. So that would be a, a motion to increase that budget line by X number of dollars for those two months. For two months, right. So all in favor? 
I excellent. Uh, it is a good investment in the people. I, I'm getting a lot of feedback. A lot of people are coming Friday night, and it's I, I don't want to say it's a free for all because they're structured to the meeting. But, you know, there was always a lot of fear or concern. We have to be all things to all people and be real sensitive to people that are seeking. And I'm not worrying about that. I want to water our people, pray over them, speak over them, cry with them, sit Indian style, crisscross applesauce on the floor. We're going to minister to the people. When they walk out Friday night, they're going to feel like they were just a year of church in one night. And I'll be speaking to the pastors in about 10 minutes regarding protocols on that. Uh, any questions just regarding the, the ministry Friday night or bringing in Quinn or interviewing our our uh, our, our um, uh, base uh, base player? Yes. No. No question. Real quick, do we have a bud? Do we have a budget for like a paid worship leader position? It would fall under payroll, and I there's a there's a full amount for payroll. This is payroll. Mm -hmm. I get to decide how it's spent. He would be able to fall in in that line item. I couldn't bring him on until after Mark and Lori reduce what we're giving mm -hmm. them, so we I couldn't bring him on yeah. um, until April. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now I'm I'm you know doing it through just a, an honorarium, and I just we have to know it's a good fit. This is a three week interview. To be honest, it's we have to make sure it's a good fit. He has to love our people. That's mm -hmm. how I knew the other guy wasn't. He's, he had no interest. Remember the guys talking to Salvador? He's like, I don't want, I just yeah. I have no interest in being close with anybody at the point. Oh, okay. Thanks for your time. Wow. Yeah. Uh, real quick, facilities. Pam is doing a fabulous job overseeing her brother and overseeing Gary. Um, and uh, really a good job with that. Uh, I am having the lighting looked at. Um, I've sent two notes to Keith. We're too dark on Sunday mornings. It's driving me bananas. I like the theater feel, but it's too dark. I feel like I need a walking stick to walk my way around. Come to find out if you adjust the lighting, it flickers like it's a strobe light. So my friend Jason, who's an electrician, is coming in, looking at everything. I think him and Keith already have a date on the calendar. I think it's tomorrow. And uh, they're going to try to figure out the baluster. Baluster, did I say that right? Or it's the bulbs. Yeah. But we need to be able to, to, to dim. So when service starts for the video, we slowly dim the lights, bring it back up for worship, bring it up for preaching, and then bring it up when service is over. But right now, I mean, Salvador, is that, a, is, is that correct analysis? It flickers terribly, and that's why they're not doing it, which kind of drove me nuts the last two weeks. But it, it's too dark for me. Yeah, yeah. And I can go into a long explanation, but it has to do with the nature of LED lights and modern lights. Modern LED lights do not fall subject to that, but it depends on whether it's just the bulbs that are outdated, the ballast that's outdated, or the dimmer that's outdated. So, um, yeah, just takes a little bit of looking into. Okay, excellent. Uh, you know, I only got one other, really one other long line item, and that is I just want to make sure you as the board know that I'm not trying to, it is not my intention to recreate the point. Too many changes too quickly upsets an apple cart. What I've been doing is just fine tuning structure most of the time. Um, I would say that there's only really two philosophical changes that will play out over time. Um, you know, I, I'm finding how deep Mark is. Mark is extremely deep in theology. You know, Mark's passion, I've always said that Mark was an evangelist in the office of a pastor. And so he, he was always, you know, let's be sensitive, let's be all things to all people, and we don't want church ever to be churchy. I kind of have a slightly different philosophy than that. And I believe that people come to church because they, they want church and they want God and they want depth. And I believe that while the church should offer salvation altar calls and get people saved, the church is the gathering of God's saints for worship, ministry, teaching, training, and in righteousness. But moreover, Ephesians says equipping people for the work of the ministry. I believe we should be getting people saved at our dinner table, inviting our neighbors over for a meal, conversation, sharing our testimony, people getting saved. And then we bring them to the house of the Lord where they experience worship, the anointing, prayer, whatever it is God is doing that day. And the, the, the word, which brings maturity. And that was one of the things I started thinking the other day. Hebrews 6 says, let us, let us stop going over basic teachings of Christ again and again and again, but let us instead become mature in our understanding. We don't need to go over the fundamental importance of repentance and evil deeds and placing our faith and trusting it. You, what you, you don't need further instructions of the things like baptism. We want to go deeper. And so it is my intention through the 
rotating of the pastoral staff is, and the, 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 the direction that I'm going to lead them in, along with Pastor David on my side, since he's, Pastor Dave is the kindred elder sitting up on the hill, sitting crisscross applesauce. Um, but the word, uh, I, I t people like Tim, Tim and Salvador both said, how long do you want me to preach? You know, Pastor Mark always wanted it 25 minutes, you know, because we just, if new people were here, we don't want it to be long. And I'm not of that philosophy. I, I believe people want depth. I think people are hungry and, and we feed and nourish the people and equip them for the work of the ministry so they can go get people saved at their dinner table and on the job and in their neighborhoods. And then they bring them to church to be fed and structured, encouraged, blessed, and lifted. Um, I think both of those philosophies can, can find a place of, of coexistence. It's just finding a little bit of balance between the two. And I think I've always felt that we were just a little balanced this way. And kind of just what I'm doing is just balancing just a slight shift, not a big shift. Um, one of the questions, Pastor Dave, if you remember, was what, what's my viewpoint on the spiritual gifts? And I want to make it clear, I will humorously label myself a charismatic. I am. I have a, a tambourine somewhere behind me. I'm joking. But I'm not trying to create the, the point into anything that it's not. But I do feel the release of, of the, the giftings of the spirit. They are for the, they are for the body, the gifting of, of words being spoken, and the gifting of healing, and the gifting of miracles, and the gifting. These are things well documented in Romans chapter 12 and, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when they are balanced, they're biblical. When they're biblical, they're balanced. And under no circumstances can we be weird or goofy or some of the nonsense that we see out there. But if our pastors feel led that God has given them a word to speak blessing over somebody, they're released to do it. Uh, if someone is sick, I, I mean, I walk around all the time with my oil. Would I just lost? There it is. I, I walk around with this thing all the time. It's not because I'm having salad, right? Um, I'm not worrying about a 25-minute message to me, feels like an hors d'oeuvre. Uh, I don't want an hors d'oeuvre. I want a steak. So I, this is not to be critical at all. It's just a little bit of a shift in ideology that I want to bring people into maturity. And sometimes it's painful. The, the word Pastor Salvador preached, to be honest, it was painful. It, I was convicted over it. I was mad for a whole day because it so convicted me that I had to have a conversation with a vice president. I did a 14 hour day on Monday for Salem, 14 hours. And I called a VP after thinking of Pastor Salvador's word. And I said, I'm never doing that again, ever. I'm done at 530. The work can wait. It will be there tomorrow. And that was a word, you know, when, when Salvador brought that hard word and it was a hard word, it produced life out of me because now I'm not all exhausted, right? And unless there's, I, I hope all of you hear my heart that we're not recreating the point. We're not turning it into a charismatic church. We're not that, but there are giftings that nourish the body and equip the body. And up to this point, we've been reluctant to move into that space. Um, but I think that we can move slightly towards that to where, I mean, remember Lori Javer, when I, I gave you in the parking lot, I, it was a prophetic wow. God put a word in me to give you when we prayed over. Do you remember that? I do. How did you feel? You were sobbing, tears, right? Honestly, though, how did and you came up to me the next week and said it was life changing? Just yeah. when, when the gifts are done, balanced and in good order, it produces life. Lori, be honest right now. How did that little bit of ministry affect your journey for that 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 week? It made a profound effect. It I mean, it humbled me that you had a word for me at all. And I don't know how to describe it. It, it just touched me. It, it was, yeah it, yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, and it was balanced. It was biblical. It wasn't weird. You know, rarely will you hear me say the words, God, spits, God says to you, but I will say, you know, I sense in my spirit or I believe in my heart that, you see how I'm giving myself an out? You know, I don't like when people, God says this, God says that. I, I, I rarely move into that space because it's an ace, it's a trump card. But I will, if I feel led to, you know, Ken, Ken, I believe in my heart. I feel like I'm hearing God say, for such a time as this, young man, rise up. And he's saying it's life changing. So you will notice as the board, I want you to know it's intentional that we're going to lean into 
some of that. If somebody is sick, we will call the elders, anoint them with oil. The prayer of the faith will heal the sick. And it's up to God to heal or do a miracle or not heal, right? But we're going to at least lean into those things which bring life to the body. But under no circumstances are we going to be weird or allow any crazy. There are protocols and rules to follow. Does that make sense? Pastor yep. Dave or anybody, any thoughts on this? I I agree with you 100%. Uh, I'm not a charismatic, classic charismatic, but as I'm you not. know, Pastor Ed, I actually uh, went to school ministry was in a charismatic church. Right. <laughs> so, and now uh, you're recovering. <laughs> recovering. You're in therapy now. <laughs> So I, I do uh, love my charismatic brothers and sisters. Some things I don't agree with, but most yep. of it I do. I believe in the spiritual gifts. I think we should get more spiritual at our church. We've had from time to time uh, under uh, Pastor Mark's uh, vision and leadership, but we've gone away from it a lot of times too. So uh, I think we need to draw back into the spiritual part of our uh, worshiping, our preaching and messaging. Uh, the whole part of it, uh, it's not just you know, saying some words and singing some songs and saying goodbye. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. And that's what charismatic means to me. It's being led by the Holy Spirit. So I agree with you 100%. Thank you. It, it, you know what it is? You said the right word. It's spiritual because we're spiritual beings. And when we gather as, as the church, God's people, the saints, as we gather, there's a measure of spirituality. And I'm not, af I'm not afraid to explore those spaces. You know, I, I want to be spiritual. It's not just hearing the word and, and being doers of it, but is there a moment where God begins to move in our midst and do we keep on going or do we pause and say, wait right. a minute, I think God is doing something here and it's okay to say, Lori, come here real quick. I believe God has something for you, right? And if we do that, as long as it's balanced, biblical and under church government, which means the elders and the pastors, then I think we can move and lean into that space without going full on, you know, and under no circumstances, weird or excessive, or, you know, somebody brings in a tambourine, we'll just, you know, shoe them up. <laughs> you know, I don't, during my message, uh, I thought about beforehand, I even thought about doing it during the message, but decided not to, is actually uh, have people come up to the altar uh, at the end, not just uh, for salvation, but those that would commit, you know, to, uh, you know, be uh, more committed to God, to come up more, be committed to the Holy Spirit and to be, uh, you know, not just loving God, but committed to God. So I was going to do that and pray over them, have the other pastors pray over them. But with the COVID, this variant's really bad right now. I didn't want everybody getting real close together. So I decided not to do There'll that. There'll be no greeting each other with a holy kiss. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> Okay, very good. Uh, Salvador, any thoughts? Yeah, I'll just, I'll mention this. I think it'll be encouraging. Uh, my friend from, he's stationed in Hawaii. His name is Greg. He came down for a Remember service. Greg, he's a big kid. Yeah, I think about, I think about a year, uh, no, less than that, maybe about six months ago. I remember him. And um, he sat in our prayer meeting and pre-service. I, I just kind of grabbed him and he was following me around. Um, and Pastor Ed, you said something. You said, um, right, something along the lines of like, we have our agenda, right? But let's be sensitive to the spirit. Um, right. If anyone senses God moving in a different way, we're taking this agenda, setting it aside and we're going with it. And that just struck him so profoundly. Um, he has repeatedly told me like, if he was, if he was able to, the point would be his home church because of the fact that he would have the comfort of knowing that that's how it operates. Um, that we're not slaves to an agenda, right? But slaves to the spirit. And um, yeah, I think, you know, I think personally my convictions may be a little bit different, but I think just his statement of that is is just something so profound. And I just wanted to share it as an encouragement of like, um, people recognize it. People see that. So um, yeah. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And, you know, that's the beauty, again, of, of kind of a core of a pastor's ministering. We're all going to have slightly different bends on things. And all of us are going in the main line, but we have freedom here. So, Salvador, you may be kind of over in this lane where you have some thoughts and perspectives on things. I may be over here. Pastor Dave's here and Pastor Tim. We're not sure where he's at yet. But that's the beauty is we're all going to have this slightly different bent. And people in the body, especially as we grow and the church fills up, 
people say, eh, Ed's okay, but wow, I really just, ah, oh, Salvador's, ah, oh, great. People will say, ah, oh, Salvador's okay, but Pastor Tim, he's so funny. <laughs> and there'll be life that comes from the stage because they're getting different flavors. I, I'm a dinner and, and you're, a, you're a full course lunch and Tim's, a, you know, an appetite, whatever, right? It's the different meals being offered to the people. Absolutely. All right. I will have an agenda for us next month that'll be sent out in advance. Uh, we talked about philosophy. Uh, we've got the banquet at the end of the month. Ticket sales are good. I think we're up to 25 or 28 right now. Worship night Friday, the retirement celebration we will circle back to. It's my intention to do a woman's brunch. Uh, Peggy Younger, friend of mine, guest speaker. Connie being the first speaker, my wife hosting. Uh, Pam will probably oversee all of the room as she normally does. A little bit of worship and uh, blessing and strength of the women over a nice brunch, really high class. Um, Hope Church may join us for that. We're in conversation now. So a lot of good things. It's just, it just feels like things are just good right now. I can't think of any anything negative to bring before you. Um, you know? Well, I have one thing to address. Please. Uh, you were saying today in an email that Vicki decided to uh, ah. step down from being a board member which is fine and we don't want to force anybody to be a board member and uh so we have one less board member and as it is with pastor mark basically semi-retired he's not really part of the board actually even though he's officially is unofficially he's not so that leaves us down to one two three four five six seven uh members and our bylaws say we can go as low as five members, believe it or not. And uh, but we have to have a secretary and a treasurer, yeah. which we have. And then uh, there needs to be an elder or so in there, in which we have uh, three of us: you, myself, and Pastor Bill. So we got that covered. So we don't have anybody that was actually nominated or voted for uh, to replace uh, Vicky, because she was a replacement for someone else that step down so i would like the suggestion to uh reduce the board size from nine to seven and uh that would you know well let's let, let me make it uh, to eight right now because pastor mark is still officially part right. of the board so i like to reduce it by one uh so we don't have to worry about replacing vicky with somebody else and going through all that right now uh, and plus, then you know, we would have to have a special meeting to uh, have her uh, accepted as a board member. And uh, per our board, uh, uh, our bylaws, we only need uh, you know, min uh, you know, minimum of five. So we, we still meet that with the seven or eight, I should say. So I would like to make a, uh, a motion that we reduce our board size from nine to eight. I second. All in favor? All against, nobody against. So Brenda, can you put that in the minutes that we have changed our board membership from nine to eight? For 2022? Yes. Or indefinitely? For, indefinitely for now. We can increase it again if we want, but for indefinitely for now. Yeah. Okay. And when Mark officially retires, we'll probably have to reduce it one more. Hi, are you in bed? Oh, okay. Bye. I was going to have you jump on a Zoom meeting. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay. So that's all I got. Okay. That's it. Meeting. Uh, I'll, uh, motion to adjourn. So I'll make a motion. A second. All right. Uh, all, all in favor of adjourning? Aye, aye, aye. Um, who who was the who made the motion? I, I see um, Dave is the second. Russ uh, was the primary. Russ, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Can I ask a question about a date on the calendar? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> is it too late um, for the Discovery Sunday for the small group? The kickoff of the small groups. Mm -hmm. That's been advertised. Um, it says it's a Sunday, but I notice it also says it's February 9th or February ninth. Which yeah, the, yeah, I made an oopsie daisy on that. I'd redo the artwork. It's, it's, I believe the thirteenth is a Sunday. I'll make sure that's adjusted. Okay, okay. and that's it'll be right after church, 15, 20 minutes. Hey, right. everybody, you're new. Here's the staff. Hey, everybody, here's small groups. Sign up. 
right? And hey, everybody, right. here's ministry teams, join the team. That's the yeah. only thing we want is to connect people into the body. Okay. All right. All right. That's it. All right. Thank you, guys. If I could just have Pastor Salvador, Pastor Tim, Pastor Dave uh, stick around just for 10 minutes, we'll call it a night. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye. Hey, Good Pastor up. Tim, how you doing? Doing all right. How are you guys? We are doing well, I think, so far. <laughs> Good. I may be interrupted, Ed. I thought we were meeting at seven forty-five instead of eight. So it's all I, it's all good. It went a little bit long. Uh, okay, and that's fine. And I only need you guys just for five, maybe eight minutes. Um, okay. So just want to make sure we're on the same page. So obviously, Pastor Luann, uh, you know, we're going to be be there six. Sound check, keyboard, quick dinner, meet right. Um, you know, Tim, just so you know, I did let the board know it's not my intention to turn the church into a charismatic church, but we are going to, we are going to open up the floodgates a little bit and just lean into some of the giftings of the spirit. And I just want you guys to know that you have that liberty tomorrow. You know, Luann's going to start off. I think it's the Michael W. Smith song, a new hallelujah, a little bit of praise, but I told Luann once we, we, we need to bring people in that place of praise, call them forward, whatever, but then we're going to move into a space of worship. And so there'll be a couple of worship songs then we're just going to linger and kind of soak in that moment. And I want you guys to know, if you feel led to do something, don't wait on me. Grab the mic and just lean into whatever you're kind of feeling led to do. I trust you guys. You guys trust me. We're not going to be weird. We're not going to embarrass anybody. But if you feel like, hey, I just feel like we need to pray for prodigals. If you have a prodigal son, a kid that needs to be saved, come up here right now. It, and God just put in my spirit to pray over that. And the prayer of faith is going, we're just going to call our prodigals home. And, you know, I'm sure there'll be some that will come and cry and we minister and just pray over them. Get the, what's his name? What's the kid's name? Jonathan. We just pray for Jonathan in Jesus name. And then we'll maybe go into another couple of worship songs and Pastor Salvador, if you want to get up and do a reading or whatever, whatever you feel led to do, by all means, please go back in a couple of worship songs. And we're just going to kind of free flow in that format. Now, um, this is also an opportunity for the body to minister to itself. And so should we worship and somebody feels like they have a word, an inspiration of the Lord, right? Or something they feel like they want to share. Proper protocol is it has to be run by an elder or one of the pastors. So, you know, you guys might want to just be in places up front. So for example, let's say Chris Roberts or somebody says they, there's something they just feel like they need to share. Excellent. Go over and share it with Pastor Dave privately or Pastor Tim. And that is where you come in as elders and, and pastors. It is our job to judge and evaluate. And it's either, yes, this is something for the body that will encourage and nourish and strengthen, or man, it's, it's, good. it's a good word, but it's not. Some, and this is where your discernment has to come in because you have to say, this is a good word, but it's not to be released now. And how that plays out when, when you're in those moments of spirituality is if the Lord is taking the service in one direction and somebody has something that is really good, but it takes the service in a whole different direction, right? That's a, that's a good word, but it is not to be released in that timing. And then, of course, the, the other one is, gosh, that's really, you know, I'm not sure if that's a word from the Lord or a slice of pizza from last night, but, you know, it's just, it's not a word that should be released now right? So we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Um, I've been in those moments. It can be a little, you know, uncomfortable, but if it's a good word and it will nourish, and, and I'm not even saying a prophetic word, I'm just saying sometimes people have a testimony or there's, there's something they want to share, then it's okay. These services, it's not just pastors. You know, we have a certain skill set to be entombed in the spirit. They may not. So if they want to share something and it's really enthusiastic and passionate, that's great. But proper protocol demands that they run it by Dave, Bill, Salvador, you, Tim, or myself, whisper it in the ear, judge and evaluate and either release it to the body, give them the mic, or just say, listen, that's so good, but that's just right, not, it's not for right now, but it's for another time. And that will keep the service from doing abrupt, hard changes, right? Have you ever been in a service where something like that went down and all of a sudden you're just, go, we're in one vein and all of a sudden something takes it in a direction where you just know that's not where it's supposed to go. That makes sense. 
Yep. Have you ever been in those services or witnessed that? Yeah, a long time ago I have, yeah. yeah. Oh, you might want to stop recording too, so that the tape, the recording's not real long.